fit. Because in my life, one people they gave me present. I don't give present for the players. And sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. What's going on everybody? It's your boy, The Executioner. And if you don't know, now you know. And off here to my right is my esteemed co-host, Almanac Jack. He's on the attack and you can't teach that. What's going on, Jack? What's going on, Executioner? And what's going on, everybody out there listening to another episode of Good Times? That's right. This is the Good Times Podcast, where there's good laughs, good fun, and it's always a good time. Damn right. New shows come out every Thursday, so don't forget to go subscribe, rate, review, and tell a friend. Yeah. So, Executioner, uh, where can they tell those friends where to find our show? All you have to do is go to www.thegoodtimespodcast.com, where you can find all of our stuff streaming on every major streaming platform. You can also find us on Instagram at the good times podcast com because why they wouldn't let us add the dot <laughs> they wouldn't let us add the fucking dot and then also you can find us at at it's good times on twitter yep and as well as our facebook at just the good times podcast and you can find us on there so yeah you yeah it's all on there yeah so uh don't forget to follow uh the instagram because when we get a hundred followers we're gonna start passing out good times podcast stickers yes and uh, I really want to do that. So <laughs> start going. Hell yeah, because I want one. <laughs> Hell yeah, me I'm going to go unfollow and follow just to be the hundredth one. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be sticking them everywhere. Yeah. Literally sticking them and everywhere. licking them. Drive throughs, bathrooms, <laughs> drive through bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, so um, I want to do a quick callback to last week's episode. Okay. Remember how we were talking about Coachella? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, it's a good thing that we didn't go, <laughs> and it's a good thing that we might not ever go. Oh, God. Because Coachella had herpes outbreak out oh, there. Oh, my God. They had a reported 250 cases a day. Okay, and this uh, this festival lasts for three days, so that's 750 reported cases. But what about the unreported cases? Oh my gosh! There could have there's easily 800 cases of herpes just in Coachella. And like I've been replying to everybody's post about this all week, all that means is Coachella is just one giant herpy. That's oh. it. <laughs> I was gonna say or a giant orgy with music. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was definitely an orgy. That's for sure. <laughs> That's so gross, though, man. That is Fucking terrible. like you go like, oh hell yeah, we're gonna listen to shit. I don't know who's who's out there. You know, Drake or we're gonna or, listen you know, to uh, Herp Master Flex. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna listen to uh, Snoop Lion or some yeah, bullshit. Snoop Herpy. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, let me hit that bong, and then pow, <laughs> big old fucking herp on your lip. <laughs> That's gross, man. That is fucking disgusting. And you know what? We actually had a few friends go out there, including uh. Trelon Musk and uh, Cynthia's Prime, so... <laughs> oh, they probably got the herps. Sorry, guys, but you probably got the herps. Sorry, y'all, but y'all got the herps. Probably just stepping on the grass or the dirt <laughs> or wherever it's at. It probably oh gives my you the God. As soon as they got touched to get a wristband, they got herpes <laughs> from, that, from right there. Yeah, there's they bodily just smelled fluids. the air like... <laughs> bodily fluids all over the uh, fucking, <laughs> fucking wristbands. <laughs> oh, that's so disgusting. Well, in, and you know, uh, we're getting closer to summer, so you know what that means, right? It's hot. <laughs> yeah, all well, that too, but... <laughs> stickers! Stickers? Yes, not the podcast stickers. I'm talking about grass stickers. Oh, as I like to, as I was told to, um, when I was younger, calling them pikas. Pikas. Just, it just means poke. Yeah, pikas <laughs> stickers. Uh, one of my teachers would call them crookies. <laughs> crookies. <laughs> yeah, or <That> pokies. Sounds, <laughs> crookies sounds like a uh, like a burger joint in like I don't know Arkansas <laughs> or something like that. In the middle of butt fuck Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck Kentucky. Come down to butt fuck Kentucky and uh, what was it called again? Cruckies. <laughs> Cruckies and come down to Cruckies. Get your uh, burgers and fries and our special double Crucky meal. 
don't know. <laughs> well, if you come on over to Crucky's over here in Buttfuck, Kentucky, <laughs> you can get yourself a Crucky burger where we put two Cruckies on a Crucky, sprinkle that with some extra Cruckies, and don't forget our special secret Crucky sauce because then you can get that cruckiness in every single bite and don't forget to make it a crucky meal where you'll get a side of crookies and one large crookie <laughs> white people only <laughs> <laughs> For real. but no dude I, I i hate these things because first of all i like to walk around barefoot <clears throat> same so if i take my dog outside to go take a piss in the backyard <laughs> wait I'm you take your dog out to go take a piss in the backyard <laughs> Yeah, because then I take a piss in the backyard. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> and the worst part is, is that my dog's fucking tail is her hair is really, really long. Really? And she drags those stickers in, dude. Oh, no. So then I'll, you know, I'll be sitting on my chair or, or on my bed or whatever. <laughs> and when I get out of bed. Pow! Fucking sticker right on the bottom of my foot. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, and plus my carpet is brown, so it blends in. <laughs> so I can't see the stickers. You might as well just have like a carpet made out of pokies and just fucking and just endure it, man. You or know? I might as well just not walk on the carpet anymore. <laughs> just jump from your bed to the fucking. <laughs> jump yeah jump from my bed to like the door <laughs> yeah so you just walk away but then and... i'm gonna hit my head on like the the threshold and... <laughs> like one two <laughs> oh god damn <laughs> you, see, you can hit the fan <laughs> for real <laughs> oh man all Holy right well shit. we're gonna do another uh call back to the to last week's episode we're gonna talk about skateboards yeah skateboarding skateboarding yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a character on like Mortal Kombat or something. Skateboarding? Skateboarding. <laughs> Boarding. He's got like a hoverboard. <laughs> we just made a new character. Well, real quick, did you see that uh, what's his name is making a hoverboard or trying to? Who? Uh, uh, De La Cerda. Oh, you know what? He's been trying to do that for years. Yeah, but you know what? The, before that, it was actually like a, like a, he was telling me it was supposed to be like a, <laughs> like a hover bike. That was like the original plan. Yeah, I think I remember him hearing that. Yeah. Or, or telling me that, sorry. Yeah, so it was supposed to be like a hover bike or something like that, but now it's like a hover board. Huh. Um, what is, did, did did he have a Facebook? Or did he I, invite people on Facebook or something like that? I, I, I don't remember. I, I think he had an Instagram. I know he had or, yes. or a Twitter for it, and, and you made the logo for it, right? No, 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 no. Um, I was supposed to. I was actually in the midst of doing it, but I just, I never finished it. Oh. And, uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> okay, it's not coming up, but, um, <laughs> what, I, I forget his name, is like Via, Via Dora Burus, I think. To tell you the truth, I was never able to say that name, <laughs> so I'm not going to try. Well, uh, when Virtual I first. Virtual Fighter, I don't know. When I first, uh, when he first came to me about making a logo for it, which I didn't make, um, he was telling me that, or he was telling me how he wanted it and stuff like that, but I ended up looking up what via Duraburus is and how to say it. And I guess it just had to do with like um like just like an evil snakes just coming together and just like I don't know, some satanic shit probably, but <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Anyways. Anyway, let's get back to regular skateboards <laughs> with wheels. With we <laughs> Yeah, with wheels. So uh let me ask you this. Uh when did you first start skateboarding? When did I first start skateboarding? I believe I was 12 11 or 12 okay um how did you get your first board so i actually had actually met my friend uh ryan when he was uh he was actually he was like eight years old and i was like 12 and i was just like riding around on my bike and uh i seen him and i was like hey man what's your name and then we were just really cool after that and he lived right down the street from me so one day we were just uh we were swimming and then he goes uh, oh yeah, I got this. I have a skateboard. I have uh, this this Walmart fucking Spider Man board, right? And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So he's like skateboarding with it. And he's like, you know what? I think my brother has a skateboard too. So I was like, he's like, if you want to use that, and I was like, sure. So I'm just thinking like it's probably some old fucking Walmart board. It was probably like I don't know a Power Rangers board. Or <laughs> he's some got shit. SpongeBob on the bottom. Yeah, it was something <laughs> like that. But he pulls it out and dude, his wiener. <laughs> <laughs> he's eight years old <laughs> his weenie <laughs> <laughs> so he pulls out the board and it's a 
It's a yeah right board. Okay. It's a girl board. Um, that that's just the name of the company, girl. Um, with like, and this is like a pro board with pro trucks, pro wheels, and like hella good bearings. So, and he at the time, I don't think he realized that this was like a pro good board, like like probably a hundred dollar board. This was. Yeah. And so he was like, "Yeah, you could use it if you want," and. That's where I basically learned to do all my tricks and stuff like that. And later on, he would always tell me, like, dude, I can't believe I let you use that board. Like, my board fucking sucked. And you were doing all these tricks and shit like that and getting better. But, you know, what's funny is that he actually got really good on that Walmart board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so imagine how good he would have gotten if he was on a regular board. Dude, he got he got better than I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got better than I did. It was pretty crazy. Uh, what about you? When did you start? Um, well, I got really into skateboarding, uh, because of rocket power <laughs> and I remember being like, man, you know, these kids are, are skateboarding and doing all this cool stuff so I can do it too. <laughs> so, uh, I remember asking my, my parents for a skateboard for, uh, my birthday and, um, they didn't get me one for my birthday oh. <laughs> and it's probably because they didn't do their taxes yet. <laughs> because come around in like March or April, I got a skateboard. Oh, nice! And it was it was a Walmart or actually take that back. It was a Kmart board because my parents didn't go to Walmart back then. <laughs> so it That's was so ironic because you ended up working at Kmart all those years. Yeah, I know. Well, everybody went to Kmart back then. That's true. That's what Kmart was still doing. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, it was a Kmart board. Uh, and um, let's see what else? I got a helmet too. Uh, and then I think I got like some like elbow pads and some knee pads and some elbow grease. And, um, I remember my mom saying like, uh, all right, you can skate, you know, cause, uh, we had sidewalk, um, even though like we lived in Fresno County, there was still sidewalk on ours. Uh-huh. So the sidewalk started at my house and went all the way down, maybe like four or five houses down to the right. Mm-hmm. And they're like, all right, you can skate on the sidewalk, but don't go on the street and make sure you always wear your pads and shit. I'm like, all right. So, <clears throat> Uh, I'm I'm going down and there's uh, a big old like lip uh, from the sidewalk and you know it's always because of like a tree root or something yeah and then like the city doesn't do anything about it they just spray like fucking orange paint on it dude that's the best place to skate <laughs> and so uh, I didn't know that was there at the time because <laughs> there was no orange paint yet oh. so I'm I'm going and I go against the lip and pow <laughs> like I fucking go flying dude I'm like what the hell was that dude and that's like your first time ever on a board you're just like oh my god I can't believe how bah! yeah I'm like this is awesome boom I'm like oh god so then um, oh my god uh the first trick I learned was a manual obviously okay um but then like I started doing the the nose manuals too oh nice I got pretty good like to where I was able to like uh do like a switch on it too Oh. So I, I would be able to go from uh, a regular manual to a nose manual and back. Ooh, look at you getting all technical. Kinda. What was your first <laughs> trick? Oh, man, my first trick. I think it was. It was probably just like a fucking ollie or some shit. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I could I could manual a little bit, but um, yeah, I never. I I think I think like uh, just fucking ollieing or I probably actually you know what I think at the time. Is when Tony Hawk was out. So, and then uh, Mike V. I don't know if you remember Mike V. The Mike Valley, yep. Yeah, he was hella cool. I ended up getting an autograph from him, and then somebody destroyed the poster. That dude, was, that dude was like the Stone Cold of fucking... Uh, <laughs> Basically. Because, dude, he was like a tough-ass redneck dude, too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And and he would always do, like, like uh, freestyle skating. Yep. And one of the things he would do is the boneless. Oh, The boneless yeah. move where you would... Uh, so basically, you're on your board and you take your your left or your front foot off. Uh, the board pops up. You grab it with your right hand and you just basically jump with with your other foot on the board and then land uh, land on it. Basically, so I love doing that move. It was so much fun. Like basically, just like grabbing it and just doing a 180 or grabbing it, doing a flip or like just doing, just doing like moves like that was yeah. so much fun. So I, I guess I could say, I mean, besides the Ollie, it would be like fucking a boneless or something like that. Yeah. How old were you when you got the board? I don't think I asked that. <clears throat> I think, I think, I think it was like either 12 or 13 after a little bit after I met him. Oh, wow. So you got yours way after mine. Cause I got mine about 10 years old. Oh, um, 
And and the the thing was too is that uh there were two other kids in my neighborhood, uh Cody and Manuel. And um, Cody and Manuel. <laughs> Manuel couldn't manual. No, he couldn't for a long time. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um so uh I was the first one to get a board and then Manuel got one. And then Cody started crying to his parents and was like, oh, I need one. So he got one. Cody Baxter? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I live right next door to him. That was when uh, he was chubby. <laughs> when he was fat Cody. Yeah. And then um, he got, he his was a Costco board. Um, <laughs> Manuel probably stole his. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. And, dude, his board was hella good, though. I don't remember what kind of board it was, but it had element trucks and wheels on it. Wow. So I'm like, huh, they don't come from no Walmart or nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not Walmart. So um, we started, we started like doing tricks and there was two speed bumps in front of my house. Mm-hmm. So we would, you know, start jumping off of those and stuff. And um, I think Manuel was the first one to learn how to ollie. And then like, you know, he was teaching us and stuff. So then we'd start, you know, doing ollies and trying to do tricks and stuff off of the, off the speed bumps. Right. How how uh, how long did it take you to learn how to ollie? Mm, it didn't take me very long, if I remember correctly. The one thing that took me forever was a fucking kickflip, dude. Oh it shit! It took me like three fucking years to do a kickflip. Yeah, took that took me forever. Ever to do a fucking kickflip, but the whole thing was was that I just did not want to commit. I did not want to commit to doing a fucking kickflip. It was like I would do the kickflip, it would flip, but I would land. Um, with like both of my feet like on the back mm-hmm. and it was just me facing forward when I should be facing sideways like and I would I would just never commit and I just remember one day I was like fuck it I finally committed and I did it and I was like holy fuck I actually did it I couldn't believe it like holy fuck and um yeah it just it just took me forever to do a fucking kickflip but I mean I, I, I was learning like other tricks like in between that time like I had heel flip before I kick flipped I was doing like 360 shove its and just regular shove its from like Switch and uh, Fakie Nolly and all that shit, mm-hmm. and um, basically and and continually manually too. There was this one time, one fucking time, and I think I might have it on video still, um, where I where I fucking manualed because uh, we used to go skate at Ericsson where I fucking manualed across uh, the entire uh, like like asphalt of a playground. And it was like from one side to the other, and it was pretty damn long. Like it was a, it was far as hell. Mm-hmm. And I remember I manualed the whole fucking thing, and I could never do it again. I don't know why, but it was just like that one time. I just happened to just have like super fucking balance. All that gravity went away. I mean, it's always gone away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and and I I remember manualing like the whole fucking thing, and just thinking like, holy shit, that was pretty fucking crazy. Like, man, but yeah, that's jumping in. Did you ever, um, did you ever go to like a skate park or anything? Yeah, I went a few times. I never did. No? No, I never got to go to a skate park. There was, well, there, <laughs> another funny story. Um, me, it was, uh, so, so at the time it was just me and Ryan skating. And I think like a year later he met, he met that kid, Devin, um, who was like our other friend. You remember Devin, right? Yep. So like Devin, he was a skater too. And he was a little, he was like a year younger than Ryan. So, uh, it's funny because like, I always like had younger friends, but thankfully I did because friends my age were just fucking like smoking weed and doing all this dumb shit and just shit I never got into basically. Yeah. (laughs) And like, uh, yeah. So he came and started coming around and, uh, like he was just basically part of like our family at, at that point. And, uh, yeah, like, I don't know. It was, it was, uh, fuck, I forgot. Totally forgot. Damn it. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, go ahead. I mean, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I just forgot. I like, completely forgot. Okay. Well, let's transition because I, I really want to talk about these tech decks. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Good old tech decks. Okay. How oh, it was you... a skate park. How... That's right. We were talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you get your first tech deck? Because they... the way I got mine was uh, my dad found it. What? Yeah, my dad just found it. By the it. tracks? I... Huh? By the tracks? <laughs> no, he finds other shit by the tracks. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys didn't live over there at the time. No. He found it because he was working at the park at the time. So he, he would find all kinds of shit at the park, and he found me a Bucky Elastic Tech Deck. Nice. Yeah. Good old birdhouse? No, it was a uh, Robin. Robin? Yeah. Because he wasn't birdhouse. It was a Robin. What? 
Robin? I've never heard yeah. of Robin before. I'll look it up right now. All right, how did you get your first tech deck? Uh, so are we talking tech deck or are we just talking mini skateboard? Either one. So my mini, the mini skateboard that I first ever got was from McDonald's, the little plastic ones. Oh and, yeah, and they just the... had like plastic wheels, plastic board, <laughs> plastic yeah. trucks. And if you did a trick too hard, the wheel would break. <laughs> Well, thankfully, it didn't break on me, but yeah, that was my first one. I just remember going to McDonald's and getting it, and it was basically a keychain as well, but that kind of, like, fucked it up a little bit, but it was still fucking awesome. Like, I don't know. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I don't really remember my first tech deck. I just remember having a shit ton of tech decks at the time, and also, um, like, when I was, like, 16 or 17, I come to find out that there's, like, actual boards... Not not handboards, but uh, like bigger tech decks that were actually meant for like tech deck competitions, and they weren't made by tech deck. They were just like handmade. They were a little bit bigger, and they were fucking like badass. They were like such good boards. And I remember I kept telling my friend I was gonna pay him for one, but he lived like in Missouri, so it was like sixteen dollars in total oh, damn. for the one. And I kept telling him that I was going to get it, but I, I just I just never ended up getting it. So I, I still want to get one to try it out because it looked badass. Like, I would watch, like, his videos. He had, like, fucking video compilations of him doing, like, kick flips and, like, kick flip to nose or, like, kick flip cro crooked grind or, like, just crazy fucking tricks where it wasn't just him, like, flicking it up in the air and, like, doing random stuff and then landing. Like real stuff, though. Yeah, like, actual fucking tricks. It was crazy. People were good. Tech Dex got so popular i remember that they started uh selling like shoes for your fingers to do tricks with and oh that's right yeah that's like right. you know you put them on your fingers and then you, they were you accessories know. <laughs> yes <laughs> and and then the same time is that um when the tony hawk games were coming out they'd release uh new boards that would go along with the game because of those boards were inside the game right right and then they would um like have like different packs to where you can like oh it comes with you know eight sets of wheels or it comes with you know two different sets of trucks it comes with you know new grip tape and stuff like that it was literally to the point where it's like you can open up like a mini tech deck shop <laughs> because <laughs> there was that much stuff coming out yeah there was but oh dude i just remembered a story too um so this one time i went to costco and you know how costco has like a bunch of games oh at the time they had like a shit ton of games so mm -hmm. When I was younger, they had games for, um, they had games for like PS1, PS2, uh, like Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, just like a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. I think like GameCube as well. But there was this one uh, Game Boy Advance game. It was like a, it was like a, uh, a skateboarding game, and they might have been, might have been Tony Hawk or like a Tech Day game. But uh, there was an accessory for it, so it was like in the box was the game, but right next to it was a Tech Deck. And or it was just like a like a fucking board, whatever you want to call it. And I was like, oh man, my parents are never gonna buy me this. So then I was, and then plus I didn't even have a fucking Game Boy Advance anyway. So I was like, what's the point of getting it? So I remember I got it right. I got the, I took the, I took the box. I went into the bathroom. I took the the tech deck out and I put the tech deck in my shoe. And I went and put the thing back. And so like me, I'm like, <laughs> at this point, I'm probably fuck maybe like eight or nine years old so this is before i even started skating um and i i like i remember just feeling so guilty like oh shit what if i get caught what if i get caught so I remember i asked my mom or it was either my mom or my dad i was like what what happens to people when they steal like when they get caught stealing and stuff like that i remember i think it was my mom she was like well they uh put you in handcuffs and they put you in the back of the uh back of the police car and they take you to jail and i was like <laughs> holy fuck, I don't want to go to jail. So I remember just taking it, out, taking it out of my shoe and just like randomly throwing it behind some like pallet or something like that. Yeah. I was like, fuck that, I'm not going to jail. Over a tech deck. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm fucking like eight years old. I'm just yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know what's funny uh, too is that uh, I had a Game Boy Color and then later on I got a Game Boy Advance. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to play Tony Hawk on like a console um, until after I had played like a Game Boy Advance version. Damn. Yeah. So like, um, I, I mean, I played the N64 one like maybe once or twice when they had, you know, demos at uh, like 
Walmart, Target, or, or Kmart, you know. <laughs> but I, I Kmart, never... Kmart, Jmart, Zmart, Lmart, Walmart. Hmart. Costco Mart. So I never got to play those un, un, until, you know, I ended up getting um, a PS2 from for myself. Okay. So that's why, that's probably why I like the Tony Hawk game so much is because like, it was like, you know, elusive. I never got to play them, <laughs> you know, and plus the, uh, dude, the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games are so different from the console ones Oh, because the, years. the Game Boy Color one is just like side scroll and you'd be able to like, it's kind of like Mario Brothers, you know, you just go left and right and up and down. And then when it came to Game Boy Advance, it's like an overhead shot. It looks like, you know, a fucking high speed chase or something like that camera and like you're able to just kind of like go upright left and and diagonal and and fucking jump barely but you can't tell that you're jumping because it's not shown from that perspective really yeah and it was really hard so then by the time i got uh you know to play uh i think the first one i got was tony hawk 3 for the playstation 2 and i was like this is a game changer this is (laughs) what have i been missing this is fucking amazing three wow yeah pro skater Uh uh-huh Huh. And and I remember that one because it had uh that was the first game that had BAM on it. Uh oh. and then uh they it had um paparazzi by exhibit and that song was fucking amazing. <laughs> oh plus it had that song by CKY. <laughs> dude, fucking CKY was awesome back in the day, dude. Hell yeah. Um I believe my first game was I believe the like one, like I, I wouldn't. I think I just played it. It was like one of the first Tony Hawk games. It was the first Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I remember playing that, and then continually playing different ones at like different people's houses and stuff like that. Do I always remember picking Kareem Campbell because he was fucking awesome. Um, and then finally, when it came down to like me getting getting Tony Hawk and stuff like that, I ended up getting a uh, Thug Tony Hawk Underground. Oh, the love first that one. one. Oh my God! You could like get off your board. You can do all kinds of shit. You could like drive cars, sketch cars. That game was so fucking revolutionary, dude. It was so good. I spent hours on that game, beating it on easy, normal, hard, all that extreme, like throbbing. <laughs> <laughs> dude, the very last mission. Do you remember the very last mission in that game? Not for the first one, no. So you had uh, your best friend at the very beginning was that guy Eric. And then uh, he ends up turning on you because he uh, because he ends up getting like a big fucking sponsorship. So he's like, all basically, he's not your friend anymore, and he's just talking trash to you and all this shit. And then so uh, basically, at the very end, he's like, "Oh well, if you think you're so good, you have to uh, follow my line." And it's basically uh, like a like it's basically a line around the entire city, but you can't um, you can't co- like jump out of your combo. Uh, yeah, it's got to be one long combo. One huh? long combo. Yeah, like, okay. Now, the, on Extreme, you had to do it without breaking combo. Before that, you could break the combos in, like, different ones. But that was the hardest fucking mission. Because it was literally, like, grind up this, land on the fucking power line, and then fucking grind on the fucking house, and then jump down to this other thing and where you would grind, and then you would manual, and then you would do some other shit. Dude, it was absolutely nuts, and it took me, like, a million tries to do that. But, dude, that game was just amazing. Dude, dude, what I would hate about that is, like, say you'd be grinding, and, and uh, say you're grinding like a planner, mm-hmm. and then you jump off, and you do a manual, okay? You're going, and then the next thing you have to grind is a fucking uh, a staircase <laughs> rail, and it goes up, and, yeah. you, and you don't have enough speed. <laughs> I would fucking hate that shit. Oh, my that's God, what would that, That's what would kill me for. Like every combo mission like that. You gotta grind jump, grind jump, grind jump, yeah. grind jump. <laughs> but I don't have the patience for that though. <laughs> Either that or I just like start to fall down. Like I start to jump downwards. So I'm like, oh my god. Well what was your favorite uh skate game? Uh probably Thug Two. Thug Two? Yeah. I think, I think Thug Two was the one with all the jackass people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh you could be like Steve O, you could be Chris, and you, I think you could be uh Wee Man too. Yeah, that, I mean, that would make sense why it was your favorite then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it probably would. No, but um, the the reason I really like that one is because um, not only did it have, like, the new ones, the the new levels, uh, you know, there was, like, a, a bigger Los Angeles one. There was a bigger, like, Miami one. Because mm-hmm. it was, like, a, it was basically, like, a like a nationwide tour because it was, um, 
Team Tony Hawk versus Team Bam. Oh, that's right. And, and it was like a nationwide tour, and it was like, uh, you know, they're competing for points and stuff, doing crazy tricks or whatever. And um, I, I remember that one. I really liked that one because it had the new levels in it, but then it also had like the old ones, like the hangar. It had the school. Oh yeah. It had it had uh, you know, like the airport level. And dude, the airport level was so cool because the hangar one is awesome because you know you can jump on the on the the. The airplane wings and shit. Right. But see, right. the airport level was it. It was like the inside of the airport, and dude, I fucking love that airport level because there's you know that conveyor belt that people walk on to walk faster. Yeah. I would always be it. going. I would always go on that thing just to get super speed <laughs> and just manual for days. It was awesome. Hell yeah, dude. They they um, I think it was the first one. It was either the first. I think it was the first one. So I thought I was hella good at that game. Like. I thought I was like shit, like the best player ever. Um, and then I went over to my cousin's house, and he's all, um, he's like, uh, "Hey, do you play Tony Hawk?" And I was like, "Yeah, hell yeah, I love that game." And so he like loads it up, right? And he's all, um, he's all, just uh, what character do you want? I was like, mm, I don't know, just like give me like Chad Muska or something like that. Chad he, Muska, Chad holy Muska shit. was fucking awesome. <laughs> um, and uh, he goes, he's all, you sure you don't want Spider Man? I'm like, what? <laughs> Dude, there was all kinds of characters oh, that he unlocked. He was yeah. like, oh, yeah, um, you, in order to do this, you have to go right here. And then in order to do this. Then there was a fucking tiki in front of the tiki hut yep. where you jumped into the fucking tiki. And then you're, like, in this, like, basically a fucking volcano uh, volcano stargate. Yep. And, like, you grabbed the tape and you left. I was like, what the fuck? Dude, there was so much shit I did not know. There was, like, three different Spider-Mans, like... The regular Spider-Man. There was like an all gray and black Spider-Man. It was crazy, dude. There was all kinds of shit. I didn't even know. I know, dude. Like, people... And then people modded the shit out of that game, too. Oh, yes. So, there'd be like fucking... I remember uh, somebody made like a Darth Maul to uh, to um, go on the board. But he would like turn his... He would throw that board away. And then he would have his his own board. He'd like, you know, I have cartoons, dude. They pull it out of their back. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. and there's a back storage back there somewhere. <laughs> so he, he would throw that board away. And then he would pull out his own board. And as soon as he stepped on the board, uh, two lightsabers would pop out of each side. Oh. So then he'd be able to go. And uh, when he'd start grinding, it's it made the sound of like a lightsaber. It's all. That's pretty cool. Yeah, dude. It was fucking dope. Damn. Man. Too bad I never crazy. had the mod and shit like that. And you know what? The other thing, too, is that the fact that, you know, there wasn't the internet and you could just look up, like, oh, how to get this, how to get that. It was like, if you didn't have, like, the cheat book, if you didn't have somebody that's, like, played even more than you and found the shit out, like, you didn't find this shit out at all. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. For some reason, like, I just didn't find out stuff like that when I was younger. And uh, I, played, I played Thug 2 a little bit uh, as well, but once uh, and then there was tony hawk american wasteland oh that was the one with like the the virtual board right the virtual board yeah wasn't there, there's one where like you you buy the game and it comes with a board that you play on no 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 no. that was a little bit later that was like tony oh, hawk grind or no something uh like project x i think or project something project 10 because project 8 didn't come with it project 8 i ended up getting that i just remember uh american wasteland was pretty good but uh once Project A came out, so I had a PS2, and my friend Ryan had an Xbox 360. So he was, like, basically a next generation up. He gets Tony Hawk uh, Project 8, and, dude, it is so fucking good. It's so, like, you know, it's the next generation console. Yeah. It's, like, smooth. He's hitting kickflips that look real. Like, you're not just jumping. Like, there's not, like, a three set where... You just end up jumping like 20 yards in front of it. Like you can actually make yourself jump a three set and make it look real. Yeah. It was so good. So like the very first thing I did, I went home. I said, mom, I need to get this game. She gets me the game. Dude, <laughs> fucking PS2 garbage. It was just like the other ones, except it was just had the same maps and stuff like that as this one. So I was like, fuck, now I have to get a PS3 <laughs> and get this game. Oh, I know, dude. That was always like the downfall of like, when the PS3 came out, us people who had still the PS2s, we'd get the game and be like, "Oh hell yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be good, this is gonna be good." And then you look at it, you're like, 
What the fuck? It was absolute ass. That dude. would happen to me when I would buy a SmackDown versus Raws all the time. Oh, dude, my, my, you know what? I never had a problem with that. I always loved SmackDown versus Raw. Yeah, but I mean, I wanted my Batista to look fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted him to walk alone, and yeah, then right. I wanted to see his belly button tattoo. Belly button. Belly button. <laughs> and then the greatest game of all time, still my favorite game to this day, Skate. EA's Skate. You know what's weird? Is I played Skate once and I never played it again. Oh man! And it's not because like I didn't like it or anything. It's because I didn't have the console for it. Oh, uh, dude! I don't think I've ever played a game as much as I did Skate. And I've I've thrown my controller plenty of times in my lifetime and broke them. But this game, I played so much that I literally broke my fucking uh my right joystick because that's how you that's how you would ollie and that's how you would do tricks and like move yeah. everything all based on uh the stick and dude i just stick like in hand stick in hand and that game was just fucking amazing like everything that you wanted in a skateboard game uh everything that was real you know grinding like all that shit it wasn't like button combinations it was like it was all in the stick stick in St- hand stick in hand <laughs> it was amazing <laughs> Absolutely fucking amazing, dude. That game still to this day is my favorite. And even though there were so many glitches on the next couple, it was still my favorite. There was three. There was three of them. People have been waiting for the fourth one for years, but I don't think it's ever going to come out unless there's like an even bigger demand than it is right now. But uh, yeah, unless they do it for the next generation, maybe they might. But I was just hearing that you know it was going down to sales and stuff like that. But you know what? What I think it was was that people were just like copying discs and stuff like that. Oh, for sure. You know, making games and stuff. You know, that, yeah. that happened all the time back in the day. So maybe that's what killed it. I don't know. Yeah, the guy I watch who who, uh, who gives me all my uh, video game news and stuff, even he's like, yeah, we need to skate for. <laughs> so, I mean, even he wants it. It's true. Yeah. And, and honestly, I, honestly, like, you know, because I, I plan on getting, you know, PlayStation 5, you know, when it comes out. Mm-hmm. And, and if that game comes out, Fuck yeah, I'm gonna get it. Especially because you know I don't even think they're making Tony Hawk games anymore. Uh, I haven't no. heard one for a while. No, the last one was uh man, I forget what it was. It was garbage though, dude. It was not good. It was oh, it's just it was just fucking called Tony Hawk Five or something like that. Oh okay. You can still buy it on fucking PlayStation on the PlayStation Store for like sixty dollars. Yeah. But it's complete ass, dude. Like if you look at it, <laughs> it's, it's ass. basically the physics. Of like the first one, yeah, mixed with like, I don't know, just it's just dumb. Like uh, you would think that the physics would get better over time, sure. But whoever did this game, <laughs> fucking totally sucks, dude. One one cool thing I did like about the Tony Hawk games is that when you crash, like there's like blood shooting out. <laughs> that was always cool, dude. That, that was <laughs> the one thing that Skate. I, I I don't believe Skate had blood in it, but. Their falls were pretty fucking awesome, dude. Like, you just hit the rail and just die. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching, like, replay videos of people on skate, like, when they'd hella eat it hard. <laughs> and they'd, they'd rewind it and do it in slow motion. And, just, <laughs> <"Ugh."> <laughs> and then after a couple of years, the third one, it just turned in kind of dumb. Because you could, like, control how your guy flips and all this other shit. And they would call it Hall of Meat, where, like, you would get multipliers for doing, like, corkscrews in the air or, like, rolling thunders. It was like cool at first, but it got like way too cartoony after a while, man. Oh, that sucks. Trying first to be trying things. to be like Tony Hawk then, huh? <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, that sucks. I don't understand because well, skate was fucking way better. Yeah. So. All right. Um, well, uh, let's uh, end it here for skateboard talk, and uh, we're gonna take a quick commercial break here. And on the other side of this, uh, we're gonna create our own superhero. Yeah. With uh, with some uh, wacky stuff. Because uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to get pretty wacky. (laughs) That's right. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's right. So this is the Good Times Podcast, and we'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Nine one one. what's your emergency? Hey, yo, Kermit the Frog here. I came into Miss Piggy's room, and she was on the floor. Please send help. Okay, sir, what is your location? I'm located on Sesame Street. Okay, sir, can you tell me what happened? When I came into the house, and I was just trying to put a frog in her throat. And then I saw her on the floor. She's breathing, but she's got a fever. It smells like bacon in here. Please help. Now, sir, is there an actual frog in her throat? Well, not anymore. Okay, sir, can you give me a description of what this person looks like? Gonzo! Gonzo! Oh, God. 
gun. He left. Please for help. I'm scared. Sir, are there any weapons involved? Any what? Any weapons? No, but but please. She's. I think she's overdosed on something. She's forming at the mouth. It, it, it looks like she's just a puppet laying here. So are they breathing? Yeah, she's breathing, but barely. Is there a fire? What? A fire? On Sesame Street? No, never. Okay, sir, have you tried to give them CPR? CPR? C. That's a three-letter word. Today's overdose brought to you by the letter C. I swear to God, Oscar must have sold her this shit. So I take that as a no, you haven't tried CPR, sir? No, I don't. But it looks like somebody shoved their hand up her butt. And she's got sticks on her hand. Okay, sir, if you can go ahead and get on, get grab a ladder from the garage, put it up, and do a elbow drop onto her chest, you may be able to get the frog out of her throat. I want the frog in her throat! I took it out already! Okay, sir, is there anyone else there with you? Well, Gonzo was here, but then he left. He, he said he had an appointment, but I don't know what for. And I swear that he's a superhero. Super Gonzo. Sir, 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 what does that have to do with anything? He doesn't have anything to do with it! Just send the mail down here, now! Okay, sir, we're gonna send a team right down there right away. Okay, freeze. Hurry. If you'd like to advertise a product or idea of yours here on the show, shoot us an email to goodtimespodcastgtp at gmail.com. We'd love to work with you and grow both of our brands. back back here on the good times podcast we hope you had a great commercial break because we did, we did. and um executioner have you seen the new avengers i have well there's a lot of hype about it there is a lot of and hype it got me thinking what? what if we were to make our own superhero <laughs> oh man well that's exactly what we're gonna do because <laughs> i told him this uh, about a week earlier so we both had times to create our own superhero and i did it this morning oh my god <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do uh we're gonna build our own superhero today all right all right so uh i got the prompt here and then um you know i'll, I'll state which let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve things uh actually i think 13 maybe anyway uh so we'll go through each one and uh we'll see uh who has <laughs> A better superhero at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go ahead and I'll I'll name them to you, and then you just like basically reply. Okay. Well, so, you gotta do yours too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll do the same thing, but back to me. Okay. You'll ask like the topics stuff like that. Sure. All right. So the very first one that you sent me was his name or their its name, sorry, and their alter ego. What do you got? All right. Well, my superhero's name is Porno Star. <laughs> oh my. God. <laughs> and his alter ego is Richard Dick Hertz. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> All, right, All right, so what does this costume look like? Oh actually, no no, let's just go back and forth. Okay. Yeah, okay. we'll go back and forth. So what's uh what's your guys' name? No no no, I wanted to save my guy's name for the end because I wanted to see if you would be able to uh guess it. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll go to the second question then. Uh what does their costume look like? <laughs> so my person's costume <laughs> the entire costume is just a galaxy okay okay and right in the middle where usually the uh superheroes uh you know logo goes it's just a giant globe okay <laughs> oh no all right so what about yours what does your costume look like <laughs> all right so from the waist up Porno Star has a uh, a red tight long sleeve with uh the word porno in the shape in and it's inside of a star that's on his chest. Oh my god. Uh he wears a red mask uh with the same logo um on it like you know on the forehead kind of. And then uh he wears a black cape uh with his logo on it, kind of like Superman's. Okay. And from the waist down he's naked. <laughs> uh but, uh, but, <laughs> but, um, oh my God. his wiener has a small mask and cape just like him. 
<laughs> That's so fucking hilarious. Oh, my All right. God. All right. The next one is what are their powers? Okay. So this person's powers, after you realize that he has a giant globe in the galaxy all over. Oh, also, he has horns. I forgot to mention that. Horns? He has horns. Yeah, like oh, a okay. double. Anyways, um, his powers is to deceive your reality with CGI and brainwashing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about yours? All right, so Porno Star has the <laughs> <laughs> Porno Star has the power to become erect at all times of danger or or at times of fornication. <laughs> he, he uses his powers of arousal to disorient his foes. <laughs> and he can shoot a laser out of his cock. <laughs> He, and he also has multiple variations of lasers that he can use out of his cock. What? So he has a white laser. He's a red one. He has, he has a, a, a he has yellow a, one. He has a laser, a blazer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what is your superhero's weakness? This superhero's weakness is people who wake up. <laughs> That's it? Yep. Okay. People who wake up. <laughs> okay. I'm st- I think I'm starting to get the name of your guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about yours? Porno star's weakness is the cold. When, <laughs> <laughs> when he gets cold, it's difficult to use his powers. <laughs> also, if he uses too many variations of his laser cock, <laughs> he becomes drained and can't use it for 30 minutes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, for an average person, it's like 45 to an hour. But... Yeah, so see, he's got a little bit of powers there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's the name of your uh, sidekick? Okay. Uh, Porno Star actually has two sidekicks, and they're oh. twins. And they were just balls or what? No. <laughs> well, uh, they're two twins, and one of them's name is the Two Inch Tackler, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is the Tea Bag Kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what are your sidekicks? <laughs> so, uh, my sidekick. Is a random guy who landed on the moon, and we might as well just call him Neil Armstrong because, uh, yeah, that's pretty much who his uh, sidekick is. That's it, just a random guy who landed on the moon, supposedly. <laughs> okay. Uh, name the vehicle, or name, yeah, name their vehicle, and what would it be? So, this person's uh, vehicle would be a tin can that is strong enough to survive the Van Allen radiation belts. <laughs> And it runs on the power of a of a calculator, right? <laughs> yeah, exact calculator and your tears. <laughs> how about how about Porno Man's uh, no vehicle? Porno Star? Porno Star vehicle. Porno Star's vehicle is an old style van <laughs> with a bed in the back, <laughs> shag carpeting. Oh my god! Black lights. <laughs> And a super stereo system. Oh my! God. And it would be called the Shaggin Wagon. <laughs> Good old Shaggin Wagon. To the Shaggin Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, what is his mild mannered job? <laughs> Dick Hertz works at a religious goods store <laughs> as an assistant manager. <laughs> And, oh my and everybody there is appalled by the amount of sexual crime as of late. <laughs> what about yours? Okay, so this jackass probably works at NASA. <laughs> this jackass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say, not a space agency. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So what about uh, what about your villain? Okay, um porn <laughs> porno star Fights crime against the hanging homeless man. <laughs> and the hanging homeless man is a bum who was. <laughs> <laughs> the hanging homeless man is a bum who was found by a porno producer while driving by. He saw the bum peeing on a wall and saw his huge penis. He took him in to make movies, but all the success. <laughs> Ended up going to both of the bums' heads, and he became evil. 
his power is having an extremely powerful and retractable penis. <laughs> it's retractable. You just throw it at people. Yeah. My pinky was a key. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next one is, uh, what is the struggle between... Wait, I didn't even get to say my villain. Oh, I thought you did already. No. Oh, sorry. Okay, who's my villain? villain? Yeah, who's your villain? Sorry. My villain is none other than Yahweh, or God. That is the villain. He is the one that destroys them all. <laughs> what is the struggle between the villain and the hero? So, there isn't much. This superhero deceives, sorry, superhero in quotations, deceives people for very long periods of time, but Yahweh always prevails, making him the bad guy in today's society. <laughs> Porno star fights the hanging homeless man multiple times a week <laughs> over hangless. Uh, oh, 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 <laughs> can't even talk about this shit. <laughs> okay, sorry. Porno star fights the hanging homeless man. Multiple times a week over the homeless man doing various sexual assaults, <laughs> kidnappings for casting couch videos, <laughs> or other sex related crimes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Okay, who is their love interest? So, this superhero's love interest is Neil the Ass Tyson and Bill Lye the Science Guy. <laughs> How about Porno Stars' love interest? Well, it's not Porno Stars. It's Dick Hurts' love interest. Oh! Because Dick Hurts' love interest is a Samoan woman named You Know You Want to Do It. <laughs> <laughs> she That's also so works. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. She also works at the religious goods store as the other assistant manager. Oh no. She's made it clear that she hates Porno Star because she, like the other people working at the store, are against all the sex-based crime. <laughs> but she has obvious feelings for Dick. <laughs> and if she found out that he was Porno Star, she would hate it and she would never be with him. Hmm. So quite a conundrum there. Okay, well, <laughs> what would Porno Star's show or movie be called? <laughs> His TV series would be called The Adventures of Porno Star, a phallic battle. <laughs> phallic battle. <laughs> What's oh. yours? So this superheroes, um, he actually has his own channel. It's called Pure BS, otherwise known as PBS. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is his show. <laughs> okay. Um. What uh what actors would play them? Okay, so in in uh in PBS or any movies that this person is in, the actors who would play the characters would be Neil the Ass Tyson, Bill Lye, Michio Kaku, um <laughs> Leinstein, and Trelon Musk. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> How about yours? Uh Porno Star would be played by Channing Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> the hanging, the hanging uh, homeless man would be played by Keegan Michael Key, <laughs> and uh, both the two inch destroyer, or sorry, the two inch destroyer, <laughs> two, two inch, <laughs> the two inch tackler, and the two bag kid would be played by Seth Green. Oh my god, that's pretty funny. The Dick Destroyer. What about the Dick Destroyer? <laughs> Because my name's Dick and I destroy people. <laughs> Still one of the best things I ever heard on Fortnite, dude. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. What would their base be called? Their base? Yeah. Like, uh, would they have you a You didn't hideout? send that to me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. No, you didn't. Well, what would, like, their, like, secret hideout be called? Oh, uh, okay. So, this, this secret hideout is actually in the tunnels of the Denver Air Base. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Porno Star's base would be called the Porn Hub. <laughs> Not to be confused with the Healthy Hub. Or any other kind of hubs. Or any other hubs out there. All right. I'm pretty sure I can guess the name of your guy. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm pretty sure it's Propaganda Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Propaganda Man, and he doesn't have an alter ego because his ego is already big enough to fit in the galaxy. <laughs> Imagine a team up with Porno Star and Propaganda Man. 
<laughs> well, that's basically what uh, X videos is. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, uh, that's basically like what what browsers and fucking <laughs> all those things are, especially when they do the parodies of all the other <laughs> movies and shit. <laughs> Oh, man. It's basically the same thing, man. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to preach the word and shit like that. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm just trying to put that shit out there, man. You know so, man? Uh, if anybody is a comic book writer or, or illustrator, please hit me up because I want to make a porno star comic now. <laughs> so, I saw that you uh, posted up a tweet <laughs> about that you wanted to write a children's book and you were asking for people who do illustrations and you got like a thousand fucking comments from everybody i do this i do that hit me up right here <laughs> hey man check this out check this out hey man check this out go here go here go there yeah. go. man i'm like if all these fuckers are paying attention to you you might as well just tell them to go to the good times <laughs> and and see the thing is is that okay like i really am trying to write this book like i basically have it written all out um because i have a lot of free time when i'm doing my job <laughs> so, so i i have it written all out and everything i just need uh an illustrator but see the problem is is that um all the people that were sending me shit i don't like their style oh really yeah i don't like what are you looking for well like what are some of your favorites <laughs> okay well I'll, I'll i'll tell you this um you ever see most children's books are kind of drawn in a way of like watercolor paintings. Okay. And I don't like that because it looks too dull. Mm. So like I'm not trying to get like a Bernstein Bears kind of look because that's really dull. Or like Caillou. Yeah. Kinda. I don't want Yeah, that's really dull too. <clears throat> yeah. Um I mean Peppa Pig is kind of bright, but I, I mean I don't like that style of, of drawing. You want like uh what I'm, I mean like I want like a kind of cartoony look. I mean I mean uh shit, the only kind of design I can kind of give off but like not exact design is like fairly odd parents oh okay like it's okay. really bright it's got you know good it's, outlines it's and kind shit. of exaggerated a little bit yes okay but I like i don't want it you know to look like the fairly odd parents i want to i want this thing to have its own design like gotcha. it like its own like flavor but i don't know it, it's it's really hard to to find somebody that's that's able to do that because they're like oh well, i can do this and then like it's like the same thing. Like they sent me the same thing, just drawn a little bit differently. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, um, you should talk to Adri. Adri does really good drawings, and uh, okay, I bet, uh, I bet if you told her what what you wanted, she would probably uh, like really kind of work with you about it. Okay. Also, depending on how much you pay her, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and and plus you would have uh, full access over here. Uh, with her and whatnot um, yeah and and her drawings dude she she does great drawings and one of the things that i've noticed is that she doesn't really have like a certain style she just does shit like she kind of draws huh? draws and dude she does it so well <laughs> draws she hopefully not draws but... yeah not not draws <laughs> not that guy <clears throat> um rest in peace but um <laughs> he's not dead he's just paralyzed I know. I know. <laughs> same thing <laughs> kind of um <clears throat> Yeah, but yeah, you should definitely talk to her about it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, are you are you um willing to give out the name of this children's book yet? Well, seeing as how many of my ideas from this show have already shown up everywhere else. <laughs> like no. porn star. No. <laughs> <laughs> because all of a sudden there's orange coke. All of a sudden there's new flavors of Pepsi. That's true. That's true. Uh yeah. I I'm not gonna give it out there. <laughs> well, if you are listening to this I am going to be the first person to become trans income where I will just make a lot of money because that's my gender. <laughs> just putting it out there. Yeah, you got to write that one down uh, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the little other bubble. <laughs> um, I will tell you that it, it is like a uh, a Christmas-based. Uh, oh, no. Santa not, Claus. Not like Santa Claus. Oh. it's was... It just takes place around Christmas time. Oh. Yeah. So I just wanted to get something in real quick. <clears throat> There's this guy. I'm not too sure who he is, but um, the, I was listening to, I was watching a video, and they had this news clip where the person's talking to this, uh, re, I think he was a priest or something like that. He's talking to, to him about Easter, and so he's like, Easter's? Uh, Easter's. So she's talking to him and saying, like, okay, so what is Easter all about? And he's like, oh, you know, Easter's all about the resurrection and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. He's, you know, talking about it and all this other thing and all this other stuff. But yeah. then, like, in a little bit, a uh, little bit after the question, she goes, "So, what do I tell people that say that Easter is a pagan holiday?" 
So the guy, he's like, well, um, uh, well, uh, well, if you didn't know this, uh, the, Easter is a pagan holiday. And I'm like, wait a minute, okay, I already knew this, but I was just, I wanted, I was kind of funny hearing him say that. Yeah. Then he says, um, <clears throat> the way, it, the way it is, is that Easter was a pagan holiday where people in, I believe it was, uh, Italy or in the Romans or something like that, something like in Rome or something. Actually, no, it was Greece. Sorry. It was in Greece where people would just go into the street and just have a big old orgy. And that's yeah. what Easter was. Yeah. Basically. But, but what happened was um, the Catholic Church came through and accepted, basically took this uh, holiday and Christianized it. Yeah. So it makes me wonder could you do heroin and just say it's Christianized and it would be okay? Well, what have I been telling you lately? Pimp cups and gold chains. <laughs> Pimp cups and gold chains. Yep. The more and more you look into it, the more and more you find out that, well, propaganda man, it might be real. <laughs> Porno star might be too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he is. His name is Lex Steele. <laughs> yeah. So he's got ultrasonic. Uh, ultrasonic voicing <laughs> whenever, he, whenever he see ums oh my god <laughs> oh man well I think this has been a good show it's been a really good show yeah especially the last half <laughs> <laughs> oh so, uh, dude I was just happy that you got my guy and I knew you were gonna get it but I had to put it on last I had to put it on last yeah no I get it I get it <clears throat> alright so uh, where can I find you on the social stuff alright first and foremost I want to thank Yeshua for allowing me to do this and um you can also find me on, let's see, Twitter at The Executioner, T H E X E K U T I O N E R, or at Instagram at The underscore Herbolutioner, T H E underscore H E R B A Lutioner. Hit me up on Facebook, Chris Clips Hernandez, C L Y P S E is how you spell clips. And you can also hit me up on Snapchat, Dat Dude, D A T D U D E 1215. And you can add me on there if you'd like. How about you, Almanac Check? Where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram, Snapchat, and uh, Twitter, all at B S A L S A N C H E Z because it's that easy to find me. Yeah. And uh, what about our what about our uh, the show social stuff? So again, all you have to do is just go to www.thegoodtimespodcast.com. We can find all of our podcasts streaming on all major streaming platforms as well as Twitter, where you can find us at, at It's Good Times, and you can uh, follow us on there. Where else can they find us, Jack? Uh, they could find us... Uh, hey, do we have all the links for that on the like the Twitter and, and the Facebook? I um, No, actually, we don't. Okay, I haven't, I haven't well, updated the website in a while. I haven't that. Well, you know what? At the, at the time that this show comes out, maybe we'll have it out there. True, but, uh, uh, yeah, make sure maybe. to uh, follow us on um, Instagram. Uh, it's uh, goodtimespodcast.com. Sorry, the Good Times Podcast Com, and then uh, we also have the Twitter at It's Good Times, and uh, don't forget to uh, make sure that we get to 100 followers for that Instagram. That way, we can get those Good Times Podcast stickers. Damn right, and also remember you can find us on Facebook as well, the Good Times Podcast. On That's right. So uh, yeah, uh, we want to thank everybody for listening to the show, and don't forget to tune in next week where we'll have another jam packed pick, lick, and dick episode of Good Good Time. Time!